This is the Now Morning Show. We are here. And that happens to be the title of our next book that we're featuring on the Now Morning Show at the hands of Miss Stacy Gould. Now, she used to be a teacher, and now she's sharing information in a different form. So we say welcome and good morning. Thanks for joining us on the Now, Stacy. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me. Firstly, I want to say good morning and shub diwali to the Hindu community. Um, it is really fitting because it is light over darkness. Mm -hmm. And right now we're shedding light on information that was seemingly in the dark. Oh boy. And also to the book is on the cusp of the Chogam, where the Commonwealth of State, where they were talking about reparations. So introduction of the book at this fitting time, you know, <laughs> well we are timed, here. Well timed. Mm -hmm. So in terms of that transition, as you rightfully say, of shedding information or shedding light, I want to ask first how long it took to procure the information that is in this book. Because what we're looking at is exposing persons, as you see, to things that have been talked about before. Putting it all together, though, is not an easy process. Wow. That, was th that question is a really good question challenging question at the same time yes it was difficult mm -hmm. pulling the information together because the community is so secluded that we had to hunt for information and do plenty research right although um, a lot of the research were already done by anthropologists mm -hmm. that came to trinidad and researched the community itself we had to get into those research and those studies you know to back up some of the things we also conducted interviews with some of the elders in the community and then back up the research to what the elders were saying to us you know so yeah it was really a challenge the team that worked on the project as well with me i must confess i want to give them big thanks baba mitch Ia Omi Yeye Omi Tuse Cyrus, Aureni, uh, Avery Amon. It's a whole collection who I was able to lace with and bounce ideas off of. And most of all, predominantly Dr. Curtis Jacob out in Grenada, historian. He is a Trinidadian, but he's living out there. And he's the one who really helped us to mold and shape this project into what it was. But it was a challenge. It took over a year. And more because I'm sure there are glitches that once we start to clean up and stuff again to get it more factual and tie down the mm -hmm. origin story of the Orisha community, you know, the, the, the information would be there for the young people. Now, in the world of digitization, it's interesting that you chose to still go with a hard copy book. Yeah. Will there be a digital version or was there a deliberate choice to do a book versus a digital version? Well, user? again, creature of habit, book first, you know. Be in the time and the era, I love to smell books, so book first. <laughs> we do have an e-copy that is coming out. Our publishers are bringing that out soon. But again, we still have to clear up some of the data, right? So we say we're not going to put out the e-book until we clear up the data and make sure we have get the feedback from the community and stuff about what was in there and stuff like that. So yeah, there is e-book that is coming on Amazon soon. But right for now, it's hard copy. Yeah. So if we were to be going through the bookstores and looking at the title itself, you get a sense of traditional practices in Trinidad and Tobago specific. Will there be, however, considering that your research team comprises of persons from the region, versions for other countries that might come in the future? Yeah, um, what we are here is really about, it is saying that all our ancestors are here. We see the Hindu community celebrating Diwali now. Their ancestors are here. We are here saying that our Igbe or spiritual mate, that's the Yoruba term for spiritual mate, they are here. Trinidad and Tobago is heavily ancestral. So all the divinities and energies that has guided us through all the challenging times that we've been through, and even now today with the challenges that we have experienced in Trinidad and Tobago with the rise of crime, our ancestors are saying that they are here and not to forget them, we can help. So we are here. So yeah, um, I believe it, it is applicable throughout the Caribbean, right? One of the things too that myself and Dr. Jacob, we discovered while doing the research in the book that what happened because it's focused on the African people, African people, and we say that African people came here through true premise or so through means, enslavement or immigration. Everybody was not slave. Everybody's descendant what didn't come here as slaves, right? So that's one thing. Another thing too is we are saying that what happened in South Africa with the Truth and the um, Reconciliation Commission with appetite did not happen in the Caribbean. 
It did not happen here. So what the Africans here under enslavement had to do was pick up themselves and just carry on and pr pretend as though nothing happened. The communities were left decimated and stuff like that. They literally had to pull, pull, pull themselves up. And you see that these communities, these indigenous communities, um, what they do, they were really the backbone for a lot of the things and the changes that took place throughout the Caribbean, civil rights movement, all of these things that took place here. You know, the unions, anything that deal with power and overcoming challenges and stuff, you see the Orisha community there and the forefront back in these initiatives, especially when it comes to African people and African rights. We appreciate you for making that linkage then in these sorts of documents because I'm sure that we, like we said this morning, practice a lot of things, innately do a lot of things, but yeah. don't understand the origins of them. So I hope that this gives a lot of rooting yes, to what you described. Yes, in fact, one section of the book tried to link a lot of the sayings that we have here in Trinidad to Yoruba land. It also tried to link some of our practices that we have here that we would consider normal or natural, but we link it back to our ancestors who taught us and it was handed down. For example, I want to link this to why are we having so much paternal deaths in the hospital and birth death, birth deaths, you know, mothers and child dying in the hospital. When we look back at it, based on ancestry or what grandmothers would have taught us, especially the, when you're pregnant and you're in the hospital and you give birth, do not go and bathe after you give birth because all your pores open. Yeah, and there's a reason for that because mm -hmm. I could tell you, you can get arthritis, it's all kind of thing they would have said. Again, when you come out of the hospital, there's also a ritual mm -hmm. of, um, for the woman to go through you know, to get her body back into alignment that the mothers would have done. Again, all these things linked to African spirituality. Some of the Hindu people also practice it as well, you know, and it have a lot of herbs and stuff that is involved in that. People who are going through birthing issues, women who cannot have babies and stuff like that. It would have had those natural ways that the community, because African spirituality or ATR are basically earth-based traditions. Ah. So you're going to learn a thing or two Yes. once you pick up a copy. And in that case, where can we get them? You could get it at Fine Print um, Bookshop in, on Charlotte Street. You could call my number, which is 357-2049. Mm -hmm. uh, we are trying to get it online on Amazon. But again, we're looking for the digital copy first. We need to put certain things in place. We need to edit as well. Once we get the feedback from the community to make sure a certain parts of the history is accurate. But those are basically two. We have Africa House. I don't, can't remember the number offhand right now. Yeah, we could find it on. Africa House with Avery Amon. And we also have Dr. Curtis Jacob out there in Grenada. He's also a distributor of the book as well. Beautiful. We are here if Orisha tradition practices in Trinidad and Tobago is coming to a shelf near you and we say thank you very much to Stacey Gould for making that happen. Putting pen to paper quite literally and making sure that the message is shared. If there's one thing that you hope people take away from the book, what would it be, Stacey? Well, the one thing I want people to take away from the book and really is to go out there and get the book. Right, because this is our seed fund towards our school, our pre-primary and secondary school that we're lobbying the government for. So this is one of our efforts. This is our ebb or sacrifice towards that initiative. Beautiful. Thanks again for putting in the good work. And we are here for a couple moments longer. <laughs> but for now, we take a quick break and come back with more here on the Now Morning Show.